in this video i will discuss the solution for objective question for topic 10 which is mechanical wave and sound wave let's look at question number one a wave is transporting energy from left to right the particle of the medium are moving back and forth in a leftward and rightward direction this types of wave is known as so if you want to choose the answer take a look at this uh, notes okay uh, to identify correct answer let's we recall back what you have learned before which is about the types of wave the solution the solution show how to differentiate between the transverse wave with the longitudinal wave we compare the vibration of particle and the wave propagation if the vibration of particle is perpendicular to the direction of the wave propagation so it is a transverse wave and if the particle vibration the direction of the particle vibration parallel to the direction of the wave propagation it is longitudinal wave so because of that for question number one the answer is d okay so for question number two if y is equal to 0 0.02 sine 400 t minus 30 x the amplitude angular frequency and wave number of the wave are so in this uh, question we need to know the application of the the general equation for the prog progressive wave so if you look at the solution we compare the general equation this is the general equation for the progressive wave so we compare the general equation for the progressive wave with the equation of wave given and from that we get the amplitude which is 0 0.02 the angular frequency which is 400 and the uh, wave number is 30 so the best answer the answer for this question is c the disturbance is the disturb the confused answer may be is a but take a look a for the angular velocity frequency there is a t there and the wave number is k so please be careful okay now take a look at question number three a certain harmonic wave is passing through a medium. What is the effect on the wave when the frequency of the wave is reduced by half? Okay, in this question, we need to know the relationship between the frequency and the terms given in the solution, which is period, speed, amplitude, and wavelength. Meaning that when we want to discuss, we need to do the analyze for each part. Okay, take a look at the first part. Or before that, referring to the question, we know that the F1, when the F1 is equal to F, F2 is equal to half. Meaning that the frequency of the wave is re reduced by half. So what happened to the period? So for the choice A, we know that the relationship between the period and the frequency is 1 over F. So when we substitute F2 in the equation, we get that 2 is equal to 1 over F. And 1 over F is T. In this is the initial T. Eh? So when the frequency is reduced by half the period is double here the period is half so wrong answer how about the speed so for the speed b <coughs> uh, choice b uh, well speed the the relationship between the speed and the frequency is v is equal to f lambda so when we replace f2 which is half f so we get that half f lambda and f lambda is initial v meaning that the velocity will decrease to half if the frequency reduced by half so in the answer it said double so wrong okay amplitude actually amplitude not, not relate with any terms in the wave okay it is amplitude which is only the, the maximum displacement and about d the wavelength so we will see the relationship between the wavelength and the frequency which is from the equation of v is equal to lambda so lambda is equal to v over f2 and our f2 is half so when we substitute we get that 2 v over f and 2 v over f is the lambda initial wavelength so because of that we get the lambda 2 which is equal to 2 lambda meaning that the wavelength of the wave is double so the answer is d is it clear okay can we go to the question number four okay yes okay question number four is quite uh, you need to think a little bit there are a few concepts that uh, involve okay take a look at the question 
two paths are travelling towards each other at 10 cm per second. So, 10 cm per second is actually the velocity or the speed for both paths. Which is, let's say if I represent this one is pulse 1 and this one is pulse 2. Path 1 moving to the right and path 2 moving to the left with the same velocity. Okay, let's say this is the first position for first uh, first pulse and second pulse when t is equal to 0. Initial position is at this as shown in the diagram. So, which of the following correctly show the shape of the string at t is equal to 0 0.5 second? So, meaning that after 0 0.5 second, we want to identify where is the position of the pulse. Where is the position? So, if you want to, calc if you want to identify the position, meaning that we need to calculate. So, referring to the information given, given the velocity, the speed of the pulse and also t uh, uh, at 0 0.5 second. So, we can get the distance or the position of the path after 0 0.5 second which is equal to using equation S is equal to Vt. And when we calculate, we get that the position or the S is equal to 5 cm. This means that pulse 1 moving 5 cm to the right and pulse 2 moving 5 cm to the left in 0 0.5 second. So now we need to sketch the pulse at 5 cm or after 0 0.5 second. So I just I, I just uh, note that I write down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 represent the 5 cm meaning that the first pulse will move until this position so the shape is like this for the first pulse for the second pulse after 5 uh, 0 0.5 second the second pulse moving referring to the brown color 1 2 3 4 5 so the first the second pulse is here okay this is the position of the pulse okay that's the one point we have identified the position but now what happened for this amplitude the amplitude of this pulse when they superpose with each other, they will produce the constructive interference. Okay, meaning that the amplitude will double at this portion, at this uh, area. So the graph is actually the shape of the graph is actually like that. Okay, can you see? Uh, just a shape, square shape. So the best answer is. B because of the position is correct, the shape is correct with the distance between the two paths. Okay. Now we go to the question number five. So question number five, if you refer to the graph, it shows the displacement of the particle in a transverse progressive wave against the distance from the source at the particular instant. The point where the speed of the particle is zero. Okay, speed of the particle is zero and the acceleration of the particle is maximum. Meaning that we want to find where is the point where the speed is zero, the acceleration is maximum. So referring to the question, there are 1, 2, 3, P, Q, R, S and T point. So we will need to identify given this five point where is obey the what the question one okay so i have show you uh, i just write down the direction of well speed at point p and at point r meaning that at that point when initially before the the particle vibrate until the maximum displacement the direction of speed of the particle is upward at the maximum height the particle supposed to stop First, then they can turn downward. They can move downward. Meaning that at the maximum displacement, the speed is equal to zero. So, V particle is equal to zero at the maximum displacement. Or, if you want to satisfy, you, will, you also can use the equation for vibrational of the particle, which is you learn it in the simple harmonic motion. You substitute Y as amplitude. Because of P at the maximum displacement. So, when you replace Y as A, A square minus A square is equal to 0. So, you will get that the V particle is 0 at point P.
Okay, so same thing at point R because of it is at the maximum displacement. How about the maximum acceleration? So, at, for maximum acceleration, the equation is A omega square, meaning that that point, that particle supposed to be at the maximum displacement. Then the acceleration is maximum. If you compare with the point Q, S and T, it is not obey the... The, the the needed from the question right because of q s and t are at the zero when y is equal to zero or equilibrium position so the best answer the answer is point p and r okay now we go to the question number six question number six is direct question but it is very important because of this is one of the concept in our learning outcome which is understanding or uh, understand the Principle of superposition of wave for the constructive and destructive interference. So, referring to the question number 6, I just recall back what you have learned in the lecture. The principle of superposition states that whenever two or more waves are travelling in the same region, the resultant displacement at any point is the vector sum of their individual displacement at that point. So, because of this statement or referring to this statement, we get that the principle of superposition states that, referring to the answers given, the answer is D, which is the displacement at a point of the resultant wave is the sum of the displacement of the individual wave acting at that point. Okay, just directly from the concept that you have learned in the lecture. For question number 7, in a resonating pipe which is open at one end and closed at the other end. Okay, what is the meaning of pipe which is open at one end and closed at the other end. What is it meaning? Actually, it is referred to, we call it closed pipe. We re refer it to the closed pipe. Closed pipe is the pipe where at one end is open and another end is closed. So, we call it closed pipe. So, if it is an open pipe, if open pipe, meaning that both end is open like this. For the closed pipe, one end is closed and another end is open like that. Can you see the difference? This is closed pipe and this is open pipe. Okay, there are two types of pipe, closed and open pipe. Okay, referring to this question, meaning that we want to find the displacement, the position of node and anti node in the closed pipe. So, take a look at the diagram. Okay, so for the closed pipe, at the close end it will produce the displacement of node and at the uh, open pipe open end it will produce the displacement of anti node okay that's the condition meaning that at the open end anti node at the close end is node because of that which statement is correct a b c or d so if you read carefully the D answer, the D is the correct answer which is, it is uh, it's a displacement node at the close end and displacement anti node at the open end. Okay? So now we go to the question number 8. A sound source is emitting wave uniformly in all direction. If an observer moves to a point twice as far away mm. from the source, the frequency of the sound will be okay this chapter 8 is actually relate to the sound intensity so we know that when the sound emit the wave in all direction which is in the spherical shape uh, we can hear the sound depends on our position that's the intensity of the sound wave but please take a look carefully this question asks about the frequency of the sound wave because of that, I just take note, there are two points here. The first, as I said, it is about the intensity. So, we know the relationship between the intensity with the distance. When the distance is far away, meaning that the distance is very uh, far away from the source, the intensity of the source will reduce. Okay, that's the first one. But, referring to the question, question asks about the frequency of the sound source. So, for the frequency of the sound source, is it is actually, okay, take a look at this uh, note, same sound source, meaning that the sound source is not changed. We refer to the frequency of the same sound source. 
So it is produce the same frequency and this frequency is not depends on the distance because of this is the frequency of the sound not frequency of the observer okay so the answer is unchanged because of the question asked about the frequency of the sound all right the best answer is a okay now we go to the question number 9 question question number 9 state that when you hear the horn of a car that is approaching you the frequency that you hear is larger than that heard by a person in the car why okay so if you want to imagine this question you imagine a policeman inside the police car uh, produce the no, on the siren so the police heard the sound produced from the siren and you are approaching the police car so you will hear the frequency higher compared to the frequency heard by the person so why this happen okay now if you look at the choices given we will we need to talk about the wave crest wave crest uh, number c there is no wave crest okay near other wave crest wave crest to other the wave length of the sound so you see ni, the speed of sound in air is increased by the speed of the car so speed of sound please take note nah, this is also confusing not confusing this is only just to disturb you speed of sound speed of sound is constant which is between the uh, normally 330 the value is 330 to 340 meter per second that's the range of the speed of sound okay meaning that the speed of sound is not changed it will not uh, it is in that range only okay so number c is not correct lah sure uh, so now we need to identify either a b or d okay take a look at the solution okay there are a few points that we need to take note the first one the police in the car moving let's say if, if the police is car moving um, uh, approaching you Meaning that the police is moving with the same car, right? Meaning that the speed of source, speed of source, yeah, because speed of sound, speed of source is equal to speed of the police, police in the car. So, no relative motion between the car and the person in the car. But, Doppler effect is actually the study for the relative motion between the source and the observer so now observer is person in the car moving with the same car so there is no relative motion okay that's the first point second point is why we hear the high frequency first one why we not hear the same frequency with the person because of there is no for the person in the car there is no relative motion so second point is we need to talk about the frequency why the frequency is higher so or larger so we refer to the equation which is v is equal to f lambda and the relationship between the frequency and the wavelength because we want to talk about the wavelength and wave press is inversely proportional so meaning that you do you know what is wavelength how wave crest wave crest too is actually like this take a look at it. let's say this is the wave so this is the crest of the waves so the distance between the two crests is lambda meaning that the frequency given is larger larger meaning that the frequency is increased so if we want the frequency increase the wavelength supposed to be decrease or uh, smaller or close together okay so the best choice is b because it states that the wave crests are closer together by the distance the car travel in one period that's the best answer lah our key point is close together okay so now we go to the question number 10 question number 10 said that while you are sounding a tone on a toy's whistle meaning that you 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 use the whistle you produce the sound you are sound source okay so you notice a friend running towards you if you want her to hear the same frequency that you hear even though she is approaching what you need to do what you must do okay now we need actually in the normal position okay i just sketch for you yeah, for you to understand 
for you to compare the direction of the velocity. If you refer to this picture, we we source those produce the sound from the whistle is source so stationary so v s is equal to zero. Sound source is the direction of the sound source is always toward the observer, and in this case, observer is running approaching the source. Okay, so the direction is to the source lah, which is V naught. F S is the frequency of the sound source. F naught the frequency heard by the observer. Alright, so how we want to make the frequency for the source same frequency that heard by the observer. So this case we need to refer to the Doppler effect. So for the Doppler effect. The main point is the instead of uh, in this equation is the sign positive or negative sign. We need to identify when you need to use the positive or negative sign. Referring to the equation for the Doppler effect, uh, to identify the sign, I have uh, tips for all of you. We compare the direction of the source, the direction of the speed of the source with the speed of Sound. If the direction of sound is not equal or not same with the direction of source, so we use the positive sign. Same thing with the direction of the speed of the observer. We compare with the speed of source. If the speed is not in the same direction, we will use positive sign. Okay. For the negative sign, same thing. We compare the velocity of the source with the speed of sound. If the direction of speed of source, same direction with the speed of sound. So, the sign that we use is negative. For the observer, which is the direction of the speed of the observer, we compare with the speed of source. If the speed of observer same direction with the speed of source, we will use the negative sign. That's why in my diagram, I show clearly the direction of the speed of observer, the direction uh, of speed of sound, so that you can compare easily. Alright, so initially, initially, in this situation, F0 is actually equal to V plus V naught. Okay, why plus? Because of if you look at the direction of V, speed of sound, speed of wave, speed of sound with the speed of observer, the direction is in the opposite direction. So if in the opposite direction or not equal direction, so we use the sign positive. And because of the source is stationary, so below equation is only V because of actually plus minus V S. But our Vs is equal to 0. So, we just leave it like that. Okay. So, initially, if in if referring to this equation, F0 will be greater or lower? F0 will be greater than Fs, right? Referring to the initial equation, initial situation of these two uh, people. Okay. So, we will get that the F0 is greater than Fs. But referring to the question, question 1, Fs is equal to F0. So, what you need to do? You are the person who whistle, who uh, sound the whistle. So, what you need to do? So, that your frequency, sound frequency is equal to the frequency heard by the observer. So, what we need to do? If we want to, we want to make F0 equal to Fs, this part... We need to use this equation V plus V naught initially, okay, initial part ni, and then divide by V plus V S with the condition that V naught the magnitude of V naught is equal to V S. The magnitude of V naught equal to V S. If the magnitude is equal, when we divide, we will get the answer which is one. So when the answer is one, meaning that F naught is equal to F S. Okay, that's the first. Condition that's the first way, first answer what you need to do. Okay, the first thing you need to move with the same speed with the observer, you need to run with the same speed with the observer. 
Okay, now where you want to run? To the left or to the right? Approaching the observer and then hug her or away from her. So, take a look at the sign that we choose. Sign that we need to use which is positive sign. Positive meaning that when we compare the source because of below is source, we talk about the source. Yeah? So, the direction of source not equal but because of positive sign and eh? not equal to sound source not equal to sound source meaning that uh, meaning that you need to run away from her sebab so, uh, because of it cannot be the same direction with the sound source vs it cannot be to that direction if we as same direction it's not happen we we not not equal to vs Vs supposed to be in the opposite direction with the source. Then you get F note is equal to Fs. Is it clear? I hope that you clear. Okay, we go to the last question, which is question number eleven. So for question number eleven, a person standing in the street is unaware of a bird dropping that is falling from a point directly above him. With increasing velocity. Standard. Yeah. When the object. Uh, free fall motion for the object. At the lowest point. The maximum is high. The maximum. The, max, the velocity is maximum. If the dropping were producing sound. Of a fixed frequency. As it approached the person. Uh, as. Uh, sorry. Sorry. If the dropping. Were produce, producing sound of a fixed if the dropping were produce sound of a fixed frequency as it approached the person, the person would hear the sound. Okay, what types of sound? What types of frequency that will heard by the person? Okay, so I just sketch the diagram, the picture to to show the situation. So the dropping is moving downward with the velocity with the speed of vs. And the sound heard by the observer, so the direction of sound is also downward. The observer is standing, so we know it's equal to zero. So we use the Doppler effect. Okay. So from the Doppler effect, we can apply the equation because of the observer is zero. So at the top of the equation, V note is equal to zero. So it left V there. And below V minus V S because of Y minus because of Vs same direction with the sound speed. Okay. So because of that, if we do the calculation, we know that V minus with the smaller value, we will get less than 1. Am I right? Less than 1. So if less than 1, meaning that F note is greater than Fs. Okay. Or we can say that uh, the sound heard when when the dropping approach the person, the person will hear higher frequency or increase in frequency. Okay, referring to the equation. Uh, because of that, the answer is C. Okay. Okay, everyone. So, for this 11 objective question, it's cover the mechanical wave and sound wave for the conceptual part question. So that's it for uh, this time. Thank you very much everyone and do take care of yourself. Thank you very much again.